Hello, I'm Beth, Research Assistant at Earthwatch Europe. I'm here to talk about climate change and our tiny forest project. Climate change and the climate crisis have been in the media a lot recently, and with good reason. It affects all of us and our everyday lives. Plus, it is more than likely that we are contributing to the cause. Climate change describes the long-term changes in the average conditions of a region, such as temperature and precipitation. Now, naturally, the Earth goes through cycles and changes. However, in the last one to 200 years, scientists have observed changes occurring far quicker than would be expected. On average, the globe is becoming warmer and there are big shifts in precipitation patterns. The effect of this translates to melting ice and sea levels rise. Changes in global weather patterns with extreme weather events such as flash flooding or drought becoming more common. These changes have a big impact on other animals and plants living on Earth, making many places uninhabitable or suboptimal for some species and changing the cycles and rhythms of others. Now we have good reason to believe that these changes have been induced by humans and the way that we live. Data suggests a correlation whereby since the Industrial Revolution, humans have been doing things that emit far more greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane, than would occur by natural processes alone. So since the Industrial Revolution, the concentration of carbon dioxide has increased by a third. And tracking this increase in emissions is an increase in global temperatures and changing weather patterns. Greenhouse gases are emitted primarily by the burning of fossil fuels, for example, coal, oil and gas, for things such as energy production in order to do all of the things that we do on an everyday basis, such as boiling a kettle, to driving a car, to heating a house. Aside from these emissions, there are other characteristics of humans and the way that we live that contribute to climate change. These include urbanisation and deforestation. Firstly, urbanisation. More and more people are living in cities. By 2050, the UN predicts that 68% of the global population will live in an urban area. As cities grow, we often significantly change the land use of an area. This reduces and fragments the available habitat for other species by removing natural surfaces and replacing them with built impermeable surfaces such as bricks, concrete and tarmac. This also serves to accentuate the effects of climate change. For example, the urban heat island effect is a phenomenon whereby cities are several degrees warmer than surrounding countryside. The impermeable surfaces also increases the risk of flooding and helps to transport pollutants. And because many people live and work in cities, they are large sources of greenhouse gas emissions. Now, it's important to remember that cities in themselves are not bad. They offer a huge array of benefits and opportunities. However, we have to be mindful that we urbanise in a sustainable fashion. Secondly, deforestation. Forests come in all sorts of forms, from tropical rainforests near the equator to boreal forests in the far north. These densely vegetated areas are sometimes referred to as the lungs of the earth. They take up carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. Forests are also phenomenally biodiverse. We don't even know all the species that exist in some tropical rainforests. And all of the species living here are interlinked, making up one huge complex food web with many species all reliant on one another for their own survival. Deforestation occurs when forests are cleared to use the land for other purposes, primarily agriculture and the cultivation of things such as beef and soy, or for timber production. Deforestation destroys a resource that will take hundreds of years to restore. And by removing masses of vegetation, deforestation reduces the capacity of an area to capture carbon. And in fact, depending on how the land is cleared and what the chopped down trees are used for, it is likely a significant source of carbon back into the atmosphere. In addition, there is the destruction and fragmentation of high quality habitat for hundreds to thousands of species dependent on this ecosystem. The effects of climate change are already affecting people across the globe. Therefore, it is imperative that we make changes to address this crisis. Here at Earthwatch, Tiny Forest is one of our newest and most exciting projects looking to help to climate proof our cities. As we have already discussed, many of the effects of the climate crisis are and will be felt more severely in urban settings. But at the same time, cities are growing and expanding. Our Tiny Forest project looks to improve urban areas by helping to mitigate the impacts of climate change, support urban wildlife and reconnect people with nature. A tiny forest is just that, 
a tiny piece of forest in a city, serving as a miniature patch of wild nature. Using native species planted densely, these small woodlands have an accelerated growth rate. Whilst the planting of a forest in a city can provide environmental benefits, so things like carbon capture, flood mitigation, thermal comfort and biodiversity enhancement, one of the things that we are most excited about is the engagement opportunities associated with a tiny forest. The local community is vital to the success of a tiny forest, be it a local school, a community group or business, volunteers help us to plant 600 trees in one day on a patch of land the size of a tennis court. Then, as the forest grows and changes, the volunteers help us to monitor and measure the forest. This helps us understand in greater detail the benefits provided by the forest and also provides volunteers with a chance to learn about some of the environmental challenges that we face. Aside from this, a tiny forest is a green haven in a city, providing citizens with a green outdoor space and the opportunity to experience how dynamic nature is as they can watch tiny forests grow and develop over time. Thank you for joining me today. To find out more about tiny forests, visit our Earthwatch Europe website.